Several years ago, I was running a workshop for a group of high-level Hollywood visual effects producers. And the goal of the workshop was to identify uh, breakthroughs in their production pipeline. And I started by asking the question, pick any pressing problem. And that's when Kyle put up his hand and said, my problem is I just don't have enough money at the end of the month. <laughs> right? What? This is a technology workshop. We're dealing with render men and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. But in the spirit of creative collaboration, I decided that's the problem that we would tackle for him. So I work with teams around the world to help them solve their complex problems. And for the past 30 years, I've studied how individuals, teams, and organizations have created breakthroughs in their industries. And along the way, I've built a variety of software tools that have led to dazzling movies and better products, smarter cars, and even greener buildings. And what I've noticed and what I've learned about these amazing creative teams is that they go through distinct steps to cut through complexity and bias and arrive at magnificent solutions. So what I thought I would do is apply these steps to Kyle's financial problem. So let me show you what happened. Step one. First, I asked Kyle to, to set a stage, a physical place for him to display and to contain his problem. And he simply taped off a portion of the wall that he was working on. Step two, populate. I had Kyle fill his stage with data, and he transferred ideas out of his head and onto the wall in no particular order. But it turns out there was an order. Can you see it? Without realizing it, Kyle produced a giant funnel with lots of stuff on the top draining to just about nothing at the bottom. And this was significant because it was Kyle's mental and emotional model of his internal experience. And that was exactly his problem. Kyle's financial model just an empty down to nothing. Step three, arrange. I asked Kyle to arrange his notes with the largest expenses at the top and the smallest at the bottom. And he simply rearranged them to see how his expenses stacked up. Then I asked Kyle the following question. I asked him to, if he could arrange his notes according to how much control he had over each expense. No control, move it to the left. Complete control, move it to the right. So this took longer because Kyle was getting to his deeper issue. He sorted it through, and after a, a couple of minutes, what emerged was another picture of Kyle's mental model of money. And this new diagram showed where he s was stuck, all those big expenses. So this actually displayed Kyle's what is state. It was a representation of his current reality. Step four, choose. I asked Kyle to select which expenses he could get more control over. So it took him a while to do this. Uh, he kind of scanned the stage, and, and then finally he made his move, and it was his coffee expenses. <laughs> right, everyone, everyone in the room groaned. However, uh, something shifted in Kyle a moment later. He stood a little taller, he breathed a little bit more into himself, and then he moved one of his really big expenses. I think it was a car expense, and then other expenses followed. So Kyle was moving from what is to what could be. In, in many ways, he seemed to be kind of running this, I guess, kind of a deep simulation of his experience and or relationship with, with money. It kind of gave him some, some freedom. Step five, execute. I asked Kyle to summarize the actions that he will commit to, and so he figured it out and he selected three steps, three things that he will do, a simple plan that he'll execute on and commit to. Okay, so what just actually happened? What did Kyle do? So Kyle took five big steps to get untangled. He applied a simple, powerful, endlessly scalable principle that is at the heart of all creative collaboration, and that is this. Make ideas visible. Teams that make their ideas visible are better problem solvers. Actually, a lot better problem solvers. They tend to build a shared understanding of the real issues. They tend to explore and shape a wider range of creative options. And perhaps most importantly, they align more cohesively on a path forward. So these five steps created space. 
for Kyle to see his challenge and apply tools to, to work through it. So it kind of seems to me that these steps are, are actually universal because they can be used by individuals, by small groups, by even large groups to kind of a vast range of problems. So let me explain to you why they work. Think of a stage as a physical space that creates mental space for thinking. So stages can take many forms. They can be large sheets of paper, they can be a wall, they can be an, even an entire room. We need stages because we can't keep everything inside of our heads, even though we believe that we can. Neuroscientists tell us that uh, making information visible offloads the cognitive cost of managing it inside of your brain. Um, they also tell us that we can or manage an, an order of magnitude more information when we put it into physical space. So this allows groups to create a shared visual memory. And uh, by the way, small computer screens, they never do this. Populate. Once you have a space, you need to populate it and convert your intangible ideas, the stuff floating around in your head, into tangible, persistent, movable data objects. So physically writing, doodling, drawing, it, you know, it actually it activates much more of our brain than just writing or talking uh, by itself. Now, these data objects, sticky notes, uh, create a marketplace of ideas where everyone's point of view is made visible. And this creates richer environments, better conversations, and tends to create clearer options. You following it? Now, once you've populated your space, what do you do with it? Well, what you can do with a range is to physically move them into meaningful patterns. The more accurately you can represent a situation, the clearer the picture actually becomes. There's about 20 or 30 uh, fundamental patterns that are commonly used to organize information. You can kind of think of this as an alphabet for visual communication or sense making. These diagrams, what they do is they allow us to map the underlying structure and patterns and trade-offs and dynamics of a situation. Now, finding the right pattern really helps you kind of paint a clear picture of what is. Mm -hmm. So these patterns can show everything from the flow of money, the flow of risk, the flow of fear. And it's really worthwhile understanding these because it gives you superpowers to understand situations. Making choice is the, this incredibly powerful act of seeing something that is not immediately apparent. Now, making group choice visible, as you're seeing here, increases a group's intelligence and its integrity because it allows people to see various options. The next and final step is uh, execution. It's making a plan and committing to it. It's got to be really simple visually because complexity is the enemy of ex execution. You put your execution plan in the simplest, fewest possible steps. So, you know, it seems obvious, but without a clear plan and a commitment to it, nothing happens. If you want to solve a problem, build a stage, populate it with accurate, useful information, arrange that into an accurate what is state, decide what your what could be state is, and then select the action plan moving forward. Now, these simple steps can be pretty much applied to, I think, almost any situation. And if you want to guide yourself or your team from unresolved issues to a clear path forward, from terrible meetings to great meetings that are productive, from mediocre problem solving to world-class 21st century problems, super problem solvers, this is the process that gets you there. I I'm really amazed to see how this um, practice can, be, can have an ap just an amazing transformative effect on uh, the people and just about everyone within it. Um, I've seen it applied in a vast range of organizations. It tends to be a lot more fun. It, for businesses, it allows you to identify and capture new value. For students, it allows you to map and create better, richer models of your subjects. So far, I haven't found a subject that I haven't been able to visualize. And sometimes the visualizations, well, they're kind of big <laughs> and kind of long, two, three, four, five hundred feet long, because that's the complexity and the nuance that's needed to be able to visualize a problem. I believe if you can't um, draw out a problem, chances are you've just not fully defined it yet. So on my mission to help organizations and individuals become better problem solvers and better innovators, 
Uh, I've created an open source site called makeideasvisible.com, super easy to uh, find, and you'll find um, uh, tools and techniques and newsletters and all kinds of good stuff. Why do this? Well, it seems to me that we live in a world of problems, and problems are becoming thicker and harder and you know, surrounding us more. And our success depends on our ability to identify the, the right problems, to work collaboratively with others, and then to create magnificent, brilliant solutions. According to the World Economic Forum, of the top skills that are going to be required for the year 2020, the most important one, the top one, is complex problem solving. And I think techniques such as making your ideas visible, design thinking, and so many others, as an immensely powerful tool to your problem solving arsenal. So a few years after the workshop, I was at a trade show and I happened to bump into Kyle uh, again. And we chatted about the future of computer graphics. And he said, you know, from time to time, I still think about that giant wallboard and the sticky notes. And uh, it really opened my eyes. And he was about to turn away. And then he said, oh yeah, one other thing. I now have more than enough money at the end of the month. Thank you so much. <laughs>